U.S. Department of Defense gave a large amount of uh, code, uh, open sourced a large amount of code, um, for a number of reasons, you know, uh, uh, to try to uh, build some efficiencies uh, between government <coughs> departments and reduce the amount of overspending on open source software. Uh, and as a result, um, uh, on software. Yeah, on, 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 on software. The, um, uh, related to that, I guess uh, uh, I'd like to ask: You know, does the uh, should governments uh, favor and mandate uh, get, you know, uh, releasing sof software, releasing the source code to software to encourage reuse, encourage uh, saving costs across across the government, and then perhaps uh, beyond uh, government as well? So. Uh, what do you think, John? We have to put you on the spot here. Well, I, 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 I certainly uh, heard a lot of people talk in favor of that, uh, both outside and within uh, the government. Uh, it, it is a model that's very valid, not the only model, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely one that uh, uh, can benefit everybody. Uh, one of the things with, with open source that we're quite aware of is, uh, like we've mentioned about the lowering the, the barriers of entry before, mm -hmm. uh, and y you have to think that uh, in Canada it's, it's not the, the the very largest companies that drive the economy; it's the SMEs, mm -hmm. uh, and anything that contributes to helping the SMEs contributes to helping our economy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but. Uh, uh, the government of Canada is, is not in the business of uh, writing software or publishing software. Sometimes we have to when there, there isn't something that meets our needs. Uh, and, uh, and, and sometimes uh, those, those things that are developed uh, are published outside and, and are used by mm -hmm. others too. IR Can is one example of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it, it, it's not a, a thing like we're planning on always doing that or uh, there's a lot of autonomy uh, with departments to do it like the way that they see as best for them. That's probably yeah. So just to, I mean, this this is pretty major. This contribution is eight million lines of code. It's 40 major modules. It's kind of you know, a pretty big chunk of an ERP system that they've actually put out there. Um, I don't think it should be mandated because you know there is a cost to making something open and uh, contributing it and creating an ecosystem around it, and you have to know that you want that to happen. I think I think there's tremendous benefits to the taxpayer if an application written in one area can be used in other areas. But in order to make it work, I think we all know that you know, software without the people that come with the software is generally useless, right? Um, and one of the things that was interesting about this uh, contribution was that uh, there's actually a, a, a group set up who've got a business. They're going to get in the business of supporting this software and it includes many people who actually wrote it first time round, right? So, you know, that to me is a smart way of doing it. Without that, I think it would, it might just be a press release and never goes anywhere because people would say, well, I, eight million lines of code and who do I ask you something? You know, I mean, <laughs> how do I get my arms around that, right? And I, I think that you could argue that people should just be able to find their way around it, but I don't think that's very realistic. And, uh, and also uh, in the, uh, with the question of releasing uh, the code, one of the big questions is under what license? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's something that, that also needs to be sorted out. Uh, yeah. More questions and answers right now from our point of view as to what's the, the best approach because like, th there's no one answer that everybody will be happy with. Uh, you either, so, so a again, you, you come down to, well, it's going to have to give uh, flexibility uh, to departments or projects right. yeah. to determine to, to the best of their, their knowledge what, what should be their approach. And just as one final thing on this, the UK government policy is open source, open standards, and reuse. And by reuse, they mean two things. One is if Department A buys a whole lot of licensed software and no longer needs it all, they absolutely have to have the right to use it somewhere else, which you might think is just common sense, but it's not the normal practice. The second thing they mean is if the government has spent you know, millions of dollars paying an integrator to go build something, then that code must be available for other departments to use. So uh, it, the, the questions of license and so on need to definitely mm -hmm. come at it. But I, I think that's a very, I think actually the reuse part of that three-prong policy will have quite as much impact as the other two.